while we're talking about food, uh, one of the hot button issues these days is genetically modified foods. <laughs> right. And you go to the grocery store, fruits and vegetables, there's two sections. There's this and then there's the organic. Is there a difference? Well, the honest answer is there is a difference because it's been genetically modified, right? Mm -hmm. Which academically means it's different molecularly than it was in its original form. Now, what does that mean? Nobody knows. Nobody knows whether genetically modified stuff is going to help you or if it's going to hurt you or if it's going to have net neutral effects. Nobody knows. Now, the argument here among the people who are non-GMO is that God and nature are smarter than man. And every single time, historically, when we have let man attempt to try to change nature, we've always, it hasn't really worked out that great. So if I had to make a decision based on just my understanding of holistic philosophy and the nature between the existence of the human body and its relationship to planet Earth, right? Because we're part of the Earth. I mean, every, everything on the planet is part of the Earth. It's a living organism. Then I would say, look, err on the side of nature rather on the side of man. But the problem is the scientific community is signed, sealed, and delivered, and bought and sold by agribusiness and by the pharmaceutical industry. So real objective scientific research about whether this crap is or whether this stuff is good or bad hasn't been done. So nobody can objectively say yes or no, and so we just kind of have to intuitively figure out which way to go. My advice based on that is avoid it because it may hurt you. I mean, it may not, but it's not like you don't have to eat a tomato. You can have the, the regular tomato instead of the genetically modified tomato, right? Mm -hmm. A greater problem here, however, is because of cross-pollination, once genetically modified stuff is growing in a field and a little bee comes along and pollinates that or picks up pollen from it and then flies across the fence to the neighbor's field where they're not growing this stuff, it's going to create this weird hybrid between the, the farmer's original tomato and the genetically modified tomato. Um, and it's bad. So when we start growing this stuff out in the open, it's only a matter of time until we have trickle-down effects somewhere else. And apparently we're not concerned with it. In the same way that we weren't concerned with igniting the first nuclear bomb. Because Oppenheimer did not know whether or not when they did that it would cause a catastrophic chain reaction in the atmosphere and the atmosphere would burn itself out. That was a possibility, a theoretical possibility. But they turned the switch anyway. 